Hello there, very good evening and welcome to your prime time news bulletin. I'm Shane Silver. I'm Sonali Manik Babagiri. We start off first with a look at the stories making headlines tonight. The Central Working Committee of the SLFP unanimously approves the formation of a national government. All decisions made should be aimed at creating victory for the country and its people. Statement made by the President at the meeting of the SLFP. Handuneti and Mayaduna named for the national list of the JVP. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party's Central Working Committee unanimously approved the formation of a national government. The Central Working Committee of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party convened today at the President's official residence in Colombo, located down Vijay Ramamavata. A committee chaired by former President Chandrika Bandar Nayaka Kumaratunga has been appointed to take forward the matters pertaining to the establishment of a national government. The other members of this committee are Nimal Siri Pal Silva, Sarat Amunugama, S. B. D. Sanayaka, Mahinda Samara Singha, and Susil Prema Jayanta. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party made a request from President Maitri Pala Sirisena to form a national government. Therefore, the Central Working Committee of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party agreed to provide support for the establishment of a national government led by President Maitri Pala Sirisena for at least a period of two years. We will operate under a memorandum of understanding. <laughs> It will be a national government. There will be no issue over party positions. The Central Working Committee will stand by all decisions taken by President Maitri Pala Sirisena. The post of Prime Minister will be decided by the committee. As per the constitution, the party with a majority of seats in Parliament will form the government. If a national government will be formed, it will be done so under the leadership of President Maitri Pala Sirisena. The President has the constitutional power to invite the government that will be established to move forward. He will express his stance as the leader of both the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and the Alliance. That stance will be taken forward. We need to reach an understanding to overcome any domestic and international challenge that may arise. The Central Working Committee has agreed to the President's proposals. The president was vested with the powers to take forward the process. It will be his decision to form a national government. I cannot reveal secrets of the Central Working Committee. However, the president was vested with all powers. We approve the forming of a national government under his leadership. So therefore, it is very necessary that we uh, just not only just take the, uh, the cabinet portfolios, but we agree to support for a limited period, I think for about two years, on a basis of certain principles and a work program. <laughs> There are persons with us who lied to the people, deceived them and stole their votes. That is the reason for our loss. We will not be let down by that. When the tsunami struck, you might have seen the train engines and compartments being washed away. This is something like that. Subsequent to the Central Working Committee meeting, SLAP representatives who were elected to Parliament called on President Maitri Pala Sirisena. The meeting took place at the Presidential Secretariat and President Sirisena had emphasized that all decisions must be taken aimed at making the country and the people victorious. He had also reiterated the need to enter proper political avenues in order to face domestic and international challenges. The President had pointed out that the country and the people can only be steered onto the victorious path by operating with a consensus and the national government is the most suitable way to do it. A committee headed by John Sinivaratna will report to the President after inquiring into the views from the party on the establishment of a national government. Over the past, we were divided on certain issues. We have reached an understanding that the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, led by President Maitri Pala Sirisena, will work together in moving forward. I believe that a proper decision will be reached through the committees that will be appointed in the coming days. 
The committee will take measures on the future process. Views and suggestions were made. I believe that the decisions will be made in the coming days. The president requested that the future government be one where the UNP and the UPFA come together. We shall see what transpires. We are awaiting the decision of the party. The JVP announced today its two nationalist MPs. Sarat Chandra Sri Mayadunne, the former Auditor General, and Sunil Handunetti have been named by the JVP as a nationalist MPs. Steps were taken to notify the Elections Commissioner in this regard. JVP Polyburu member KD Lal Kant today announced that he had decided to step down from his position as Councillor of the Western Provincial Council. <laughs> I submitted my resignation taking into account both the need of national politics and the service of a provincial councillor. We entered the provincial council on a different political matter. Now that we have a new political situation, we need to work according to a new plan. Partly Champigaranavaka convened a media briefing today. Candidates who contested under the UMP from the United National Front for Good Governance were also present. We believe that the President and Prime Minister will work together to take this country forward within the next five years. There will be no parliamentary election nor presidential election until the year 2020. Within this time frame, we need to build a proper social economic program. We believe that the opportunity will be taken to overcome all international and economic challenges. In the meantime, the Police Financial Crimes Investigation Division recommenced several investigations today. Former Central Bank Governor Ajit Nivad Cabral was summoned today to the Police Financial Crimes Investigations Division for a statement. Cabral was summoned to record a statement on an alleged financial fraud on the hedging deal and the alleged fraud that took place during the acquisition of a private company to the Urban Development Authority. <laughs> Shashi Viravansa, the wife of MP Vimal Viravansa, arrived at the Financial Crimes Investigation Division today for a statement regarding her assets. The investigation is said to be legal and we will support the investigation within the framework of the law. It was decided to summon Vimal Viravansa tomorrow. The FCID had questioned her on how she paid utility bills and her means of a monthly income. Police media spokesperson A. Spiruan Gunasekara said that the chairman of the Eastern Provincial Council, Aryavati Galapati, was summoned to the FCID today for questioning. Udi Gamampila was summoned to the Police Special Investigations Unit or the SIU this morning to record a statement. The allegation made against me is that I had brought down a bankrupt businessman from Australia and used the power of attorney privilege and sold his shares worth $100,000. A complaint was filed with the police. The police have found out that Brian Chadwick did not have any shares in. So if shares are to be stolen, he should first be in the possession of the shares. There is no evidence that he gave me the power of attorney. Therefore, this complaint is baseless and the police said that they will not proceed with the complaint against me. Different events were organized to welcome candidates who emerged victorious at the parliamentary election today as well. An event was organized at the party office in Athol Court today to celebrate the victory of UNP candidate Dr. Harsha De Silva. The Prime Minister vested the responsibility of winning this electorate to me. We did it. We worked for the United National Party. This victory was not forcibly achieved. These votes were not forcibly taken. These votes came from the people's hearts. UNP Parliament-elect Chatur Sena Ratna visited the Kalaniya Rajama Vihari yesterday and obtained blessings. No one in this country undertook this challenge. I came to Gampa in four weeks without an address, nor a house, nor an office. I pledged to make all dreams of the people of the Gampa district a reality. Mahapolave Atarte about a Patkarnabata, Pratignava Deno. 
an incident was reported during the post election period UPFA K Gold District candidate Anuruddha Polgampala today filed a complaint with the election secretariat api pahadiro dakka me mana kaygal district It was evident that my preferential votes from the K Gold district were reduced. Therefore, I made a complaint to the Elections Commission today. I was informed that the preliminary investigation will be done in the future. I asked him to carry out a preliminary investigation so that he can investigate any discrepancy in the counting of preferential votes. If there needs to be a recount, I informed him that I am bound to pay for the expenses if my claims are proven wrong. The Civil Defence Force, which comprised of approximately 40,000 personnel, was set up to provide security for the unprotected border villages during the civil war, and also provide support services to the police and security forces. Was converted into a department with the cessation of hostilities. This department, which was initially restricted only to a name, was later converted into a fully fledged department last March, when those retiring were granted a pension. With the ending of the war, the civil defence force personnel were deployed for construction purposes in and around the city of Colombo and its suburbs, and were involved in the beautification of the city under the instruction of the three armed forces. Outside of Colombo, civil defence force personnel engaged in agricultural activities and were involved in providing some sort of income for the state. At present, these personnel who were engaged in agricultural and other activities. for and on behalf of the state have now been reduced to a state of forced labor these visuals of civil defense force personnel engaged in road construction activities in kurnegala is evident of this state of affairs these road construction activities are being carried out by private companies it should be questioned as to how civil defense force personnel have been assigned to carry out these activities on behalf of private entities and be paid a monthly salary by the state when the daily wage of laborers that are employed by such entities is approximately 1200 rupees per day in these circumstances the question arises as to what type of service contract was signed that allowed these state employees to work for private companies director of the civil defense force this is over to you In other local news a suspect has been taken into police custody along with a batch of tortoises prepared for export. Police said that they seized two dozen tortoises when they raided a location in the Palegude area in Kalania. Police have launched an investigation to determine as to whether such animal species were illegally exported to countries like China and Japan. The value of the seized tortoises have not been calculated as yet. The suspect is to be produced before the Mahara magistrate today. A car collided with a bus down Abdul Kader Mawata in Colombo today. After the accident, the car had fled the incident and the driver was later arrested by the police. The escape was caught on camera by News First U reporter from Daraniyagala, Chamara Ilangaratna. A five vehicle pile up was reported on the Southern Expressway between Galnigam and Dodangoda. The accident took place in close proximity to the 28.9 km post. Police said that the pile up of vehicles resulted in a severe traffic on the road. Crude oil prices in the world markets have dropped. 
The price of a crude oil barrel has dropped to 40 US dollars. According to foreign media, this is incidentally the lowest price recorded for a barrel of crude oil in seven years. A barrel of crude oil stood at 100 US dollars 12 months ago. In the Brent market, the price of a barrel of crude oil stooped down to 47 US dollars. Reports indicate that the high production of oil worldwide has resulted in the cost to reduce. The government has planned to introduce a new price formula for domestic fuel prices. And on that note, we wrap up tonight's edition of Primetime News. I'm Sonali Wanagababagi. And I'm Shane Silva. Take care and good night.